Hello, rogues. Welcome to Saturday. I hope everybody is having an excellent day. You can't officially acknowledge them, but you appreciate their existence. I, I don't know what you're uh, what you're referring to there, but um, I I do see that there was a um, a Q force generator located, which that's kind of a frightening prospect. But apparently, um, the Q force generator has turned us all into adorable uh, chibi versions of ourselves. Which chibi is fun. I like chibi. Um. But yes, uh, hello, Detective Zen. Hello, Lord Portico. Um, hello, Elixir. It is good to see you. Uh, it's been a fun conversation happening uh, that I sort of was perusing as things got prepared. <clears throat> Looks at the ops console with big sparkly eyes. Oh, dear. I may have to commission artwork of... Um... Oh, well, you know, I sort of do have chibi chibi heads of myself, don't I? <clears throat> Why an elite space force suddenly had a pranks core? I, I assume a pranks core is a good thing. I, I don't know. Um, I, I enjoy it. So <clears throat> it is um, it is Saturday here where I am located. Uh, it is it is afternoon on Saturday. Um, as we approach the uh, the time vortex that will steal an hour from ourselves. Um, chaos rebalancing. <laughs> um, yes, uh, so if you are in the United States of America and in certain um, jurisdictions, I remind you that tonight is the night where we, for some really pointless reason, um, advance our clocks by one hour. So uh, be prepared to lose an hour of sleep here in the US, unless you happen to be in Hawaii or I think it's Arizona or parts of Illinois um, where they don't observe the saving of daylight time. Yeah, not Hawaii and Arizona and also, um, yes, or parts of Indiana. It's right on the border between like Indiana and Illinois. And there are some cities that cross the border between. And so they don't change their clocks. Um, so that the city stays the same time. I, I don't know. But yeah, <clears throat> it's all silly and confusing and um, stressful. Um, it's documented that both at both time changes, um, there are more heart attacks following either either the spring forward or the fall back um, because it's stressful. The change in in schedule can disrupt your body rhythms. And yeah, so there there are more heart attacks following both time changes uh, than if we just left the clocks alone. Probably the same reason that some Australian states don't observe for the sake of the farmers. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that is happening, which means if you're in a place that is not changing your clocks tonight, my stream tomorrow, while it will be at 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time um, will happen for you at a different time. Let's see, I'm advancing forward. So 1 p.m. will happen at what would have been 12 p.m. my time. So my stream will be an hour earlier for people who are not in the United States. And I wish I had realized this Wednesday so I could have told people on the archives stream that stream next week would be an hour earlier. But I didn't know until I saw an email from the one person at my workplace who is good enough to remind everybody that works there on the Friday before each time change. 
taking an hour of sleep that you already don't get is like taking ice cream. Yes. It is, uh, it is. They have stolen candy from me and I am a baby and I am going to ball my head off. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, an, I'm slightly annoyed by the time change. Um, I really wish that we would just get rid of it. Um, I did, uh, for, for anybody who's been following along with the saga of me having laryngitis for like two months, um, I went to the ENT yesterday, the ear, nose, and throat doctor, uh, or otherwise known as an otolaryngologist, but they just refer to them as ENTs here. Um, and ha had my appointment, and that was yesterday at eight in the morning, which Yesterday was my my Friday that I have off and I usually get to sleep in and I didn't get to sleep in and I was upset by that. Hi, Sir Cabby. Um, <clears throat> so I, yeah, I um, went in and uh, explained what's been going on. You know, I got sick back around Christmas and um, after getting through the sickness, I had laryngitis and really couldn't talk. And then, um, you know, the year started up and I had to start talking again. And so I did, but, and I went to the doctor cause the laryngitis wasn't going away and they gave me some steroids and those helped, but my voice never got back to normal. And it had been steadily getting worse. Like the last couple of weeks, um, I don't know if you all could tell, but by the end of uh, by the end of Wednesday's archive stream, I could barely talk. It hurts so much to talk. By the end of that stream, uh, I could neither get up nor get down with the sickness. Um, <clears throat> so it it was painful by the end of the stream. Um, the talking was and. So the doctor was like, okay, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to take a look at your voice box uh, to confirm. I think I know what's going on. And so um, a content warning for people who don't like medical procedures. Um, it was, doesn't involve cutting or blood or anything like that. But um, <clears throat> the doctor put a scope in my right nostril and down my throat to look inside my voice box. That was a very strange experience. It was not painful at all. Um, swallowing felt weird for about like a half an hour afterwards. Um, but yeah, he went inside and looked and uh, basically said, there's no damage. It's not, um, there's no hemorrhaging or anything like that. Um, and so the diagnosis is something I had never heard of before, which is um, muscle tension dysphonia. And the best way that I can explain it is essentially, I had laryngitis and needed to talk and pushed myself to talk, even though I wasn't at the point yet in my recovery from laryngitis where I should have been talking. And that got my muscles into a habit of um, speech production that assumed that my regular voice wasn't going to work. So I was using different muscles to force sound out. And my body just sort of got stuck in that habit of how to create sound. And so I sort of sort of like pulling a voice muscle, except instead it was I, I was using different muscles to make the sound um, than normal, which ultimately may meant <clears throat> that it takes took more effort to talk, um, would get painful over time, and I didn't have the same vocal range as normal because my normal talking muscles weren't the ones that were causing the actual sounds to happen. Um, 
apparently a, a fairly common thing that happens, especially following um, some sort of triggering event, such as a cold or laryngitis, um, but that over time can cause damage. It can lead to like um, no uh, nodes and uh, basically it can be bad for your voice long term. And so I have uh, been told that I should schedule some time with a speech pathologist uh, because I need to train my voice to speak properly again. Um, what's interesting, though, is I got up this morning and very intentionally, uh, while, like while I was in the shower, I was doing like vocal warm up exercises and trying to make sure that I wasn't flipping into the extra effort and that I wasn't, um, so basically I was, I was, I'm, I'm hitting falsetto like normal. So I was starting in falsetto and doing like, um, slides downward to try and force my voice to use the right muscles for my, my normal voice. <clears throat> and it, not 100% successful, but at the moment, talking doesn't feel like it's taking extra effort. Um, my voice sounds more normal. I don't think I fixed the problem entirely, and I probably do still need to consult a, a speech pathologist. I kind of feel like I should maybe... I don't know. I, I feel like I should... I want to do some research and see what sorts of... Um, vocal exercises are typically used to treat this to just see if I can correct it on my own without having to pay somebody. Um, plus, I learned yesterday that my mother-in-law was a speech pathologist. I did not know this. I have been married for almost nine years. And we've been together longer than that. <clears throat> and I just learned that my mother-in-law was a speech pathologist. <laughs> so I think before I make an appointment and potentially have to pay uh, U.S. healthcare costs, I'm going to look for information to see what typical treatment is like and ask my mother-in-law who is no longer a practicing speech pathologist if she knows anything about how this is typically addressed. Um, the, the ENT did say that it probably would not be too difficult to break the habit, considering that I had only been experiencing it for about two and a half months, um, which is a good thing to hear. Uh, so, so yeah, it's, I'm not opposed to going and seeing the professional whose job it is to treat these sort of things. It's just at this point, uh, the, the voice issues I've been having have been an appointment with my primary care physician and an appointment with an ENT, all of which go against my insurance, but then still have out of pocket costs. Um, and so before I go to somebody for rehab, which I don't know if anybody has ever been referred for any sort of physical therapy or anything like that. Um, U.S. insurance companies don't like to pay for it. They like to do everything they can to deny those charges. So before I uh, go scheduling an appointment with somebody who's it's going to cost money that my insurance company might want to deny. Um, I want to see if I want to see if I can get enough information uh, to try out some exercises that might correct it. And then if that doesn't work, then I will then I will make an appointment. Um, but knowing that it's not. It, it's not even at this point technically still laryngitis. Um, I think I'm willing to give that a try and see. 
I don't know what just happened. Aha! There we go. I, I switched where my headphones are like connected and and um, routed them differently under the desk now. And somehow I, I slightly unplugged the headphone. And so I only had sound in one ear. It was very strange. Um, so anyway, hopefully uh, more random singing will occur as my voice starts to feel better. <laughs> because we like the chaos singing. <clears throat> so yeah, um, that's the update on on me. Um, oh gosh, what is? I feel like I should like talk about stuff that's coming up. Oh, hi shadows! Uh, thank you for the lurk. Uh, thank you, Sir Cabby. I hope that I recover uh, speedily as well. Um. Interestingly, in reading about it, one of the things that it said was that uh, the speech pathologist may ask you to do um, stress reducing things like getting a massage or having acupuncture or stuff like that. And I was like, huh, OK, so stress is a component of this. It's not like I have stress happening with it being spring for some reason. <clears throat> spring, the spring term at work. I always end up overcommitted. I always have too much going on and my stress level spikes. Um, and I, I have not been taking on lots of extra projects this year. And yet somehow I'm still overwhelmed at work with just I have too many things to get done and they're not progressing fast enough. Um, and then on top of that, you know, <clears throat> outside of work, I do I do the streaming and there are things that I want to do for this. And so I have the, a whole like big long task list of like things to do, but they're not like they're not as stressful because they're not like super, they don't have deadlines the way that the, the work stuff does, except that they sit there and they sit there and they sit there and I start to feel like <clears throat> I should have been working on this. I'm having to let that go. I, I when I talked to my therapist this week about the fact that like last week before Saturday's stream, I came very close to having a full blown panic attack. Um, and we, we talked through it. And basically that was also um, <clears throat> the answer to that is essentially I'm doing too many things and I need to uh, I need to get some of them off my plate. Uh, so. I'm trying to be a, a, a little bit more calm, a little le less stressed. Um, we'll see how it goes. Because there are commitments that I have that I have to do. And then there are commitments that I have that I want to do. <laughs> and some of the want to do's, I just need to be like, OK, you can keep this as a want to do. But it is low priority, and it's not going to be a disaster if you let it wait. You don't want to talk about spring semester stress. The fact that you were... Oh, yes. Thank you. I am very, very happy, Elixie, that you turned those down. Um, as much as I did not want to be nominated for either of them, <clears throat> I was... I did slightly wonder why I hadn't been and whether anybody in the rest of the um, voluntold sort of, but it was nominated. It, they, they were nominations. You have to accept the nomination. But one of them is one of them was for a thing that is supposed to be self nominations. <clears throat> and somebody didn't nominate themselves, crossed out their own name and nominated Elixir instead. Um, so there have been times lately where I feel like I wonder if the other I wonder if the rest of the library knows that I even still work there. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, <clears throat> but I'm getting by part of the part of the stress is, um, that 
I now I like words, words. Hi, words. I can form sentence. I can form thoughts and turn them into words that come out of my mouth as coherent sentences. Hi, Puddle Glum. Um, <clears throat> so we have a process that is essentially tenure, except it's called continue continued appointment for us. But once it gets past the library itself, it's all the people that have tenure that are making the decision as to whether to recommend our people for continued appointment because it's essentially tenure. It's just not called tenure. And um, I am now at mandatory review time for that, meaning I prepare a dossier, submit it. All of the people in the library who already have continued appointment decide whether to recommend me. They pass that along to the dean who makes his decision about whether to recommend me and passes it up the line. It goes to the university level where there's a committee of people that have tenure that decide whether they think that I should get our equivalent of tenure and pass that to the provost who then makes his decision um, and forwards his recommendation to the board of visitors who have the final say as to whether I get continued appointment. And if they don't grant me continued appointment, I have to find a job. Um, so <laughs> it's not like that's stressful, right? <clears throat> uh, so yeah, I have uh, I have to prepare a dossier and it uh, is due right around the beginning of August. Um, and then about a year later, I'll know whether I've been granted continued appointment. No, if you don't get the, <clears throat> if you don't, if you're not granted um, continued appointment or tenure, um, basically you go onto a one-year contract and at the end of that year, you don't have a job anymore. <laughs> so, and honestly, the most stressful part of it for me is, I, so everybody that, I've been talking with about like uh, for like mentoring and stuff like that. Everybody has told me that I should not have any problems that that I should be good. Um, but even hearing that does that doesn't make me feel like I have done enough. Everybody tells me I've totally done enough and I should have no problems. But that doesn't make me feel like I've done enough. Um, the most stressful part, though, for me is that I have to identify a list of external reviewers um, who need to be people that do similar work but are not, like, well known to me. Like, we don't really know each other, but they do similar work and they have their institution's equivalent of tenure and I make a list of them and they are sent my dossier and get to uh, get to say whether they think that I should be granted tenure or continued appointment. Um, and for some reason, that entire concept of like having to identify these essential strangers who do similar work as me uh, to weigh in on whether they think that I should continue to have a job that is the most stressful part for me. <laughs> hmm. Sounds like the professional development plan that you have in Wisconsin for teaching certification. It is. I. I'm trying to be hopeful. But it's. It's a scary process for me. <clears throat> and um, yeah, yeah, it's a it's scary. I don't know. I, I there was something else I was going to say, but as I was trying to figure out how to say it, uh, it, it fled from my mind. 
so I don't know what I was about to say. <clears throat> anyway, um, I'm going to move us towards actual game um, as quickly as I can at this point. Let me see. Uh, today is Saturday, so we're going to be playing Ultima, which we have done every Saturday that I have streamed, except one, um, for the last two years. There was one Saturday stream where I played Valheim instead of Ultima. Um, otherwise, every time I've been live on Saturday, it has been Ultima. Uh, we started with Ultima 1. We are now in Ultima 6, and uh, we have two more map pieces to grab before we have all the map pieces, and then I don't know what happens. Um, so we'll be playing that shortly <clears throat> on this game stream. I know, Zen, it's so strange. Tomorrow, we're going back into Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition, and despite the fact that we're basically done with the Citadel DLC, we're going to play the party again, because the party was lots of fun, and I'm told that uh, the results of the party can be slightly different if you make some different choices about when to have lively versus quiet moments. Um, so we're going to do the party once more. It'll probably take the entire stream. Uh, which will count as another side quest uh, before we finally progress to the end of the original Mass Effect trilogy. Because I, I believe we are close. Um, and then, of course, uh, I, somebody actually asked me yesterday, I think, on Twitter, after I finish Mass Effect 3, we will be playing Andromeda. Um, unlike the first three, I have previously played Andromeda, but it has been a while. Um, I have restarted Andromeda a couple of times and not really progressed terribly far in those new plays of it, just because I've been too busy. Um, so the beginning will be really familiar to me, but beyond that, I won't necessarily remember things. Um, so that'll be fun. Monday, for uh, for Mystery Mischief Monday, we will be continuing with Mist 3 Exile. Um, <clears throat> I need to update that command. Oops. Uh, so, yes, this week is Mist, and then I believe next week is Mist. Yes. And then the week after that, we will play whatever the spin wheel says we should play. So we got two weeks of mist, then something from the spin wheel, and then uh, Star Trek Online, and then back to mist if we still have mist to do. Otherwise, one of these. I'm trying to get that in there. I don't know. We'll find out. Also, I may throw it. I, I I don't know yet. I don't know what I'm doing. People really liked the Star Trek Online, and I would love to play more of it. But I also want to keep doing the spin wheel games. I'm just gonna make it chaos. You'll be making your pie day pie during stream tomorrow. I will be making a pie um, today after stream. Well, at least part of it. I don't know if the pie itself is going to make it happen tonight. I still need to par cook the crust. Because it's a fruit pie and it doesn't really get baked. Um, I've made the crust, but I need to roll it out and par bake it. Um, and then do the fruit portion. I don't know if I'll get all that done tonight or if some of it will happen tomorrow morning. Um, I'm taking pictures along the way and this was intended to go into a blog post. But at the moment, I my website is not ready to launch, so I don't have a blog to put it on. I'm rebuilding my website, <clears throat> uh, which is why I don't advertise the one I currently have, because it's going away soon. Um, so it might the photos may just end up on Instagram or something. I don't know. You'll be <laughs> baking Monday night. Time means nothing and you don't know what day it is. 
Um, I will have photos, so I would be happy to to potentially um, throw up a, a, a fun pie day post. It's not a historical recipe, though. It's just a pie. I'm doing a strawberry kiwi pie. So anyway, it is double XP this week in STO. Um, the one thing that I... No, I'm going to... Okay. Sorry, it's been 10 minutes since I said I was going to progress to the game quickly. Um, I've been trying to decide. So Sunday has become Space Day. And I like doing Mass Effect every Sunday. I could potentially swap out and do Star Trek Online occasionally, though. But Star Trek Online works really well on Mondays. Except at some point, it's going to not work so well on Mondays because the missions will get too long for the time slot that I have. Um, so I don't know. That's one of those things that is working as it is and can be a low item on my priority list. I can keep things the way they are for now and change it up later. You're making a 1930s lemon orange pie and maybe a variation with lemon grapefruit and one swapped ingredient in the curd for a scientific comparison. I will be happy to taste the lemon grapefruit pie. Um, <clears throat> I, I will avoid the lemon orange pie like the plague. Um, and then, of course, coming up on Wednesday is my archives stream. Wow, that sentence took a lot to get out. Um, and this week for Archival Adventures, we will be exploring all of the items that I could find in our collection related to the Girl Scouts of America because tomorrow is their 111st birthday. And so in celebration of the 111st birthday of the Girl Scouts of America, <clears throat> I'm going to look at Girl Scout things from our collection. Yay, Romulan levels! Yeah, that one's updated. I just forget that I'm supposed to update the other one. Okay. Uh, you know, we should maybe start looking for um, some pirate map pieces, right? Oh, I will also toss in there that we may be seeing the end of um, necessary uses of this. I will find a way uh, for us to continue burning Chantel's logo. But um, it might be a channel points redeem or something like that. Um, we'll see. But... <laughs> decals. Um, yes, so Tuesday afternoon, I, uh, I'm going to have to leave work early because between 3 and 5, a competing ISP will be here to install their product on Tuesday. Um, and we've been waiting. They said they were going to move into the area. And we waited and we waited and we waited. And finally, um, sometime earlier this past week, uh, they came knocking on the door to let us know that they had their product available. And... We're switching. Brand new infrastructure, so hopefully not the same problems. Sadly, it is not. Um, oh, shoot. I can't remember what what the term is. Download and upload speeds are not identical. But upload speed is supposed to be 35 uh, megabits per second, which should be enough. Um, it's definitely more than the 10 per uh, the 10 megabits per second that my current plan um, says that I should get. Um, I wish it was like actual fiber where download and upload were identical because then I would be getting uh, 1200 megabits per second upload. Uh, but it's not. So it will be what it will be. And uh, funnily, after... 
making that decision, I still haven't told my current ISP. I won't until after I get the new stuff installed. Um, but after I made the decision, I've been having a lot of internet blips over the last two days. Sometimes consistent can be better than fast. You're right. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I will be going to one of the most hated internet service providers in the United States of America. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to bring the game on screen, though, and we can we can continue talking. One of us, one of us. Um, I've had this ISP before. I had them where I lived before, but when I moved here, they didn't offer service here. So, and I never had problems with them. Um, but my new internet service will be coming from Xfinity, uh, which is Comcast, which is a very not liked company, uh, but they have the new infrastructure here. So uh, the service should be better. Okay, let us, uh, let's journey onward. I believe we were standing in a graveyard trying to figure out how to get this woman to talk to us. And waiting here didn't seem to work. Like, we were told she's in the graveyard at midnight. She won't talk to us at midnight, so I was like, well, let's wait around and follow her home and talk to her there. And we waited for like an entire day and she never left. So, a common graveyard problem, yes. So I did what any uh, person who has been playing a game for more than 90 hours um, and over the course of eight months uh, would do. And I consulted the um, <clears throat> walkthrough slash wiki to see what the heck I was doing wrong. And discovered that I need to be talking with her at her home. Which I don't know where is. But um, thankfully the walkthrough slash wiki also knew that information. So <laughs> I'm going to try and locate it. Oh, and my light spell has di disappeared. Um, we are in the Abbey of the Empath, right? We were just in the graveyard. Wait, no, I don't know where her home is. I have no idea where I'm supposed to go. Okay, I'm going to find this out because we wasted so much time. And we stood around trying to like follow her home and she never left. So, um, how do I do? How do I do? Uh, let's see. On the Western outskirts of the village. So go West, uh, I don't know that I would refer to myself as a young man, but uh, go west. Or the co-west. Yes? Yes. Okay. A common graveyard problem would be a fun name for a D&D &D character. Oh, no. Walkthrough slash wiki would be a fun name for a D&D &D character. That might be a confusing name for people, but confusing names are not bad in D&D. Incidentally, how has everybody's um, uh, TTRPG gaming been lately? Um, I did share an update on my game uh, on Sam's stream a little bit ago. Um, I don't know if Lord Portico saw it. I've been trying to avoid like talking too much about it because um, I know Lord Portico has been playing the same module that we are playing. 
Uh, and I don't really want to give things away. Okay, my... My window organization is not working right now. Let me rearrange slightly. Because I can't see everything I need to see. I tried a different setup and it was bad. need to uh chat just needs to lose a little weight i'm gonna i'm gonna make you a little bit slimmer there now i can see alerts or like activity feed the chat and the game at the same time yay um <laughs> Ooh, you played the Frost Maiden game last night? It's been a week since I played. I don't remember most of what happened. Um, the only spoilery thing, or the only thing that I, I mentioned really in Sam's stream was... Um... Aha! I have located her home, and apparently she's here and asleep. Um... Was that... My character, who is a uh, three foot five, thirty five pound uh, fairy rune knight fighter, um, has been s growing bigger for the last three hours of in game time, and is now six foot five and thirteen hundred and ten pounds. But he can still fly, so he's not really concerned about it. You've been going a little ham on making or coloring minis on the Hero Forge website. Uh, the way that some people make character sheets on D&D Beyond. No actual games at the moment, though. Oh, I'm sorry. Hopefully sometime. Um, I like making uh, minis on the Hero Forge site as well. <gasps> She's here. She's awake. And we're going to talk to her. It just means I can reach the top shelf. Well, I could before, but only by flying. So now I can without flying. Also, because of my Rune Knight uh, subclass, I have a con connection to giants, and like one of my abilities lets me grow from my normal small size to large size um, <clears throat> three times a day. So. The fact that I'm just, like, getting bigger without activating that ability um, didn't really seem strange to my character. He just assumes that clearly this is something to do with his association with giants and their magic, and he's okay with being bigger. Okay. The voluptuous woman in blue velvet. Hello there. St Hello there, stranger. Can I help you? Um, let's ask her name. I am Selena Moorhead. Um, not the graveyard. Western outskirts. Uh, okay. What, what is your job? When I need some money for food and such, I work as a seamstress. Okay. Most of the time, however, I live off the seashore.
you live off the sea or you live off the seashore? Living off the sea would mean like fishing and stuff like that. But living off the seashore, most of the time you eat sand? I, I, I'm just uncertain of the phrasing. Um, okay, well, let's ask these questions. Moorhead. I am a widow now. I live in a cottage on the beach. Well, I know that. We're at your cottage. Does she eat seashells? Selena eats seashells down on the seashore. Um... My husband left me a little money to support myself for a time, but I still like to sew fine clothing. There are few things as relaxing as embroidering and sitting by the ocean, listening to the surf. By the sea, Mr. Todd. I, I don't remember any of the other lyrics, but... By the sea, Mr. T. Um... If Solania sold control water spells, could you say she sells sea spells by the seashore? Solania sells sp sea spells by the seashore. Yes, that would be an in-game tongue twister for sure. Uh, excellent. Um... Mostly, she just likes to sew by the sea. All right. How about seamstress? Yes, I used to make such fine clothes for my Nathaniel. Really? Your husband's name was Nathaniel? Though he was not a bad husband, I'll always remember him as something of a scoundrel. She smiles and her lovely eyes sparkle with memories. They say he went down in a storm. He was a pirate. I don't know if any of you have seen the um, the Sweeney Todd movie that they did uh, a few years back when they started making movie musicals again, and um, they did Sweeney Todd in the uh, Tim Burton style. Talking with her is making me think of... Um, uh, Mrs. Lovett from that, um, who was played by, oh gosh, what is her name, what is her name, what is her name? Helena Bonham Carter. You hate the, oh, you have the movie. He was the Dread Pirate Roberts. Uh, so Angela Lansbury was the original Mrs. Lovett, but in uh, in the Warner Brothers movie musical starring Johnny Depp as Sweeney Todd, Helena Bonham Carter uh, played Mrs. Lovett. And for some reason, whenever I think of the the song "By the Sea" from Sweeney Todd, I always think of that version and not the original musical. I don't remember that song. I'm sure it's in the original. It wasn't added for the movie as far as I know, but I never think of the original. I always think of Helena Bonham Carter singing it. Um, so you also have the soundtrack. Sweeney Todd is a fun 
it's a fun musical. It's a morbid musical, but it's a fun musical. Uh, my pie making apron is a Mrs. Lovett's Meat Pies apron. My husband left me a gold locket wrapped in an old piece of... In a... Yes, okay, I'm doing the thing that I typically do. <clears throat> my husband left me a gold locket wrapped in a piece of an old ship's chart. Maybe that's what you seek. Uh... I was doing a thing that I have done for a long time. And in second grade, they thought I just needed glasses and they gave me freaking bifocals. But I don't think that it was actually my vision that was the problem. Um, but I have this tendency, if I'm reading, I will... I will mix in words from later lines into the line I'm currently reading. So here I was like wrapped in it, wrapped in an old. Um, and then I got confused because wrapped in an old is not on there. It is wrapped in a piece of an old. But my brain skipped a piece of. And then I got confusing. For a second there, you thought I said that Angela Lansbury was the original Dread Pirate Roberts. We don't know who the original Dread Pirate Roberts was. Angela Lansbury totally could have been the original Dread Pirate Roberts. There is nothing in the lore of the Princess Bride that precludes her from having been the original. I don't have the locket or the map anymore. The traveling folk came by one day and... One of them stole them. Uh, yes, this game does not have good representation of this population. Um, yes, some traveling folk are trustworthy, uh, but others are scoundrels. Thank you, game. Thank you for actually noting that they're not all thieving scoundrels. Just gonna say yes. Um, okay, and... We don't know how many Dread Pirate Roberts there have been. This is true. There's always a bit of fish or gull's eggs to eat. With lobster once in a while. Fresh lobster is really good. As long as you're not allergic to shellfish. Uh, my brother-in-law lives in Maine. Right. Right on the water. Closer than would be legal to build the house today. Um, and so <clears throat> when we went up and visited, we had fresh lobster. Because the neighbor kid really wanted to bring us some lobsters that he caught. I'm as carefree as one of the traveling people. Okay. They travel the road between Britain and Trinsic. Normally, I like them. They're a merry lot. But one time, a group of them stole my prized locket. Did we already have locket as a keyword? No, we did not, but I'm... I'm guessing we're not going to get too much information out of these two words because we already got information about it having been stolen. Oh, we already had stole as a keyword. 
We didn't have locket as a keyword though. Um, <clears throat> he said that the chart would make me rich. I didn't really care about the chart, but the locket. That locket was all I had to remember Nathaniel by. She sighs and looks away for a moment. Um. They put her locket in her in, po in their pocket. So they could go hawk it. Sorry, my brain immediately went to um gosh, is that West End story? Got a rocket in my pocket. But my brain substituted locket for rocket. Or West Side Story, West End Story. That would be very different. West End Story would be about part of London instead of part of New York. But, um, and regardless, West Side Story is just Romeo and Juliet. Um, okay. Bye bye. Well, okay, so we need to go see the traveling folk who tried to sell us a map piece earlier, and we said no. Apparently, um, apparently they have an actual map piece. The only time when switching a locket for a rocket wouldn't end in death and disaster. Sorry, in disaster. I don't know why I said death. Let's see, if I go straight to Trinsic, that would be time saving, wouldn't it? Let me just look up our uh, handy dandy little guide here for how we teleport places. And Trinsic is two down. Also, since I'm in inventory, let me just make sure everybody has arrows that needs them. 107, 147, and 116. So I think we're good on arrows. Use the stone! Britannia. All right, let's pull up Trinsic. I always, I don't know, whenever this song is the one that's playing, I always just think it's kind of funny that Hail Britannia is one of the songs in this game. All right. So we should head east. And we just need to find some traveling folks if they if they happen to be here. I used um I hit the I pressed O to try and open the door when uh this game doesn't use the full alphabet in that way anymore. If they're here, they're going to be at the Fool's Paradise, probably, which is northward. Northward we go. Yes! The guard wasn't there to Piss me off by not letting me inside the frickin' town. I'm guessing they're not gonna be here in town. And that we'll find them probably closer to pause, which is where we usually find them, but I felt like we should at least look around since they travel the road between this town and Britain.
We don't know her. Who be you? You see a sultry, dark-skinned woman dressed in riding leathers. I do not know you. You are new. Knew you who you? Sorry. A sultry, dark-skinned woman in riding leathers. She's wearing an awesome hat. Hello, strangers. What can I do for you this afternoon? Some call me Emmanuel, my lord. Others call me something else. Okay. She winks at you. What might your job be? I raise horses here in the stables. There are some who call me Tim. I also sell horses if you wish to buy one. Well, I'm not really interested in that, but perhaps sometime I will show you. Um, not here. Huh. I suppose we will at some point in time have to come and find her over at the stable? and ask her to show? Come back again soon. As you leave, she blows you a kiss. Um, I believe a hasty retreat is called for. You're not gonna let me out, are you? Let's hope Terry doesn't find out. No! Why must I be accursed by all of these admirers? Alright, let's follow the road and... Hey, hey, hey! Save game. Talk. To Andreas. I don't know which of these was the one who offered us a map piece. Homer. Oh. I may not have taken that note. Silly me. I don't think I took notes on one of the traveling folk tried to sell us a map piece before, but I don't remember who, and it doesn't look like I took a note on that. So let's see. <clears throat> Andreas. I don't have any notes about him being the one who did so. 
Alessandra, Anya. Let's see. Uh, Arturos. No notes on him doing it. Here's Dan. Imagencia, Shalom. Minot, Castle Britannia. Moonglow, Scarabry. All of our notes from Dr. Cat. An excellent character. You know, this could be easier. Road between pause and intrinsic. Wicked Wanda. Huh. Well, apparently I did not take uh, good enough notes. Let's see what we can find out. Welcome back, Aokan. <laughs> Dodge to avoid flying kiss, indeed. I came for some more of our hospitality, see, I see. Map. A map? I, Arturos, has some scrap like that. I know nothing more of it. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I have a note. Arterosis. Two traveling folk come to Trinsic hungry as usual. One goes out and gathers a poisonous we weed from the swamps. Other puts plant in trough of a horse. Horse's owner, Emmanuel, doesn't know what to do. Traveling folk. Huh. I have no idea where that note is entered, but apparently I have a note that had Emmanuel in it. Um, anyway. Let's talk to Arturos. Uncle Arturos. Good work, Pass Rogan. May your travels prove interesting. Think it's gonna be you? Arturos! Um, who is known as Uncle Arthur. You see a colorfully clad, bemused-looking person. Hey, Paisan, if you were looking to get to your fortune told, you came to the right place. Map. Hmm, map. Oh yeah, that old thing. Sure, I got that. But she's not very interesting. Say, do you want to buy it? Hmm. What if I say no? No, nah, I didn't think so. What would you, what would anybody want to buy it, eh? Say yes? Oh, well, sure you do. She's a very important map. He leads you away from the rest of the group. Don't want no spioneers, huh? Yeah, this a map. She's uh, leading to the treasure of... Oh, who was it? Yellowbeard or somebody? Well, I forget. But the point is, it leads to a big, huge treasure. So if you want this a map, you're gonna have to pay 100 gold, okay? No. Well, I hate to see anybody pass up good fortune, so I tell you what I do. I sell you this map, this key to infinite wealth, for just 75 gold, okay? What, are you not? But okay, how's about just 50 gold? 
Thank you. You have saved me from making a big mistake. You're right. I better hold on to this valuable map myself. No way is it worth less than 100 gold. Okay. Well, now I know what the price is going to be. I didn't have enough in my pocket for any of it. So uh, let me at least put enough gold into my pocket and see if I talk to him again. Map. Yes. 100 gold, no. 75 gold, no. 50 gold, yes. Okay, here's the map. And may fortune bring you lots of gold. Hey, you come again soon, okay? All right. We have map piece number eight. I have eight pieces of the map. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. I know, it, but that is, that's sort of the dialect that was written, so that's what I went with. Um. Okay. That means we have map piece number eight. And the only thing to do now is bring all eight pieces back to Buccaneer's Den to Homer. I was not smart and did not keep a note of where we left our boat. I think... We left it in pause. Eight down. Eight down. Time to visit Mr. Beatnik. Indeed it is. I think we left it in pause, but we're right outside Trinsic, so we'll check Trinsic first. And if it's not intrinsic, then uh, we'll walk up to pause. Because I I wanna say that's where we left the boat. I don't think this is our boat. Apparently, this boat belongs to me. If you start singing the magic boat song, will the boat start singing too? Oh, I'm a magic boat. That's all I remember of it. I really, really hope that someday, someday, uh, Jason Charles Miller actually releases um, the magic boat and other songs from the Gags Pack as actual music that we can download and listen to, because that would be amazing. Um, all right, so if we're here intrinsic, I need to go up. I wish I could read the coordinates on the map. But I need to go north a little bit, and then east. If I go north, uh, and I find, and I get to pause. <laughs> it's too intrinsic. Alright, this is the Outer Banks. Go up through here. If I go east, I should find Little Islands uh, north of here. That should be... Not quite. Yes. Yes. This should be an island. Yes. Oh, it's got skellies on it. I'm trying to pay attention to the shape of the islands. I think if I go directly north here. Yes, okay. 
I'm trying not to get lost at sea again. I get lost at sea much too easily in this game. Honestly, in all of the games. This should be... Yes, okay. Directly to the east, we should run into the island that has Buccaneer's Den. It was easier to navigate from town to town when the towns were just a single graphic on the um, on the map and you actually entered them by stepping on them and entering them. Now that they are a bunch of buildings arrayed across the map um, and the window is so small, it's actually harder to navigate by knowing where you are uh, in relation to Um, the town. Because you can't necessarily see the town from the shore until you find its dock. Yes, it's Dock Dock Goose. Hey, look! It's another one of our boats. How many of our boats are we going to leave here at Buccaneer's Den? All right. The Den of the Buccaneers. Moon glow, Jalong. Written out. I need to go down a few pages. Buccaneer's Den. And we are looking for the Rusty Bucket. No, the Fallen Virgin Tavern. What's the Rusty Bucket? Oh, it's the shipwright. Actually, I think we can go in here. Hello, Captains. Hello, Beatnik Person. Save game. Talk. To Homer. Maybe we'll get a tale of a Homeric Odyssey. Our mission was to bring all eight other pieces to Homer in the corner of the tavern. When you find the pieces, you can lay them out on the ground to see how they fit together. And let's find our notes about our conversations with Homer. <laughs> oh. We could probably just f show him a donut that is um, frosted with pink and take the map piece from him. Um. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stretch real quick. Um. Actually, it is a good time for a break. So I think I shall take a quick bio break um and how about we plan it for three minutes because if i run three minutes of ads then people arriving won't get pre-roll ads for an hour and i keep trying to make sure i'm doing that when we go on break but i keep forgetting to do it if you're subscribed you won't see the ads at all but um, just a warning to anybody who's not subscribed. I'm going to run three minutes of ads while I'm on a break. And then when they're done, I'll come back and we'll continue. Uh, so now's a great time to get up and, you know, go and get a beverage, take your meds, stretch, grab a bite, uh, grab some snacks or food or, you know, all those sorts of um, self-care things that um, you may have been neglecting while sitting around doing things and listening to streams and um, yeah, so I will see you all in a couple of minutes.
Hello, everybody. I hope that uh, you all had a nice little break um, and that the ads weren't too obtrusive. Hopefully they're done. Um, and hopefully do they running them does what I intended, which is makes it so that anybody coming to the stream uh, doesn't get hit with an ad as soon as they arrive. Because um, that's what it says it's supposed to do. And as much as I don't like advertisements in any form, um, I sadly can't shut them off entirely. Uh, so I'm hoping it does what it's supposed to do and uh, stops the pre-rolls, because if it does that, then that means less ads for people arriving, um, which is about as much, as much control as they'll give me. All right, uh, let's talk to Homer. <clears throat> you see a shifty-eyed character. He carries a cane and walks with a slight limp. So have you found the eight pieces of the map yet? Um, yes. Very well. I've been thinking about how we could work out a deal. I know you want the silver tap. As far as I'm concerned, you can have it. All I really want is the magical cloak that's buried with the rest of the treasure. So I'll tell you where the ninth piece of the map is if you promise to bring me the cloak. The rest of the treasure should be loot enough to satisfy you. Is it a deal? <clears throat> Hmm, I mean, I suppose. I I don't see why I ever have to come back here, so yeah. Okay, the ninth piece of the map is hidden right here in my pocket, he grins wickedly. I had to keep it safe while you were off gathering the others, didn't I? He hands you the last piece of the map. The island is in the upper left hand corner. The island in the upper left hand corner is Buccaneer's Den. You'll keep your word and come right back here with the magic storm cloak, won't you? Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. I know, I know I'm the avatar. I know that I'm supposed to not lie, I'm supposed to have the honesty trait, right? But at the same time, I'm probably not going to bring that storm cloak black back to you. I don't remember. Did he say left hand corner or right hand corner? I think he said left hand corner. Did he say right hand? Oh, dear. <laughs> left, right, left, right, left. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. I'm try I was trying to decide how best to take note on uh, the map. I think I have decided this is how I'm going to do um, note. I don't know what I'll need, but let's see. I suppose when we uh, look at the map, hopefully we can figure it out. The den or be done. Those should have question marks. I'll deal with that in a second. It's one of those corners. Um, won't you? Yeah. Good, then I'll tell you this. When you reach the island marked with the X, Find the three stones and stand in the center.
<clears throat> when you reach the island marked with the X, find the three stones and stand in the center. Then walk three paces due south, nine paces due west, and twelve more paces south. Three. Uh, three south. Nine west. I feel like I'm getting Stardew Valley instructions. Um... 12 south. That should put you right next to an old dead tree. An old dread tree, according to my typing. Dig in the patch of dirt just to the south of you, and you'll find the treasure. I might need a shovel, I guess. Now go get it! Well, I'm a go-getter, so sure. All right. Our notes said that we can lay them out on the ground to look at them. So let's find a good patch of ground to make that happen. How's this? Game. Okay, Buccaneers Dam. Bring the storm cloak back and you would bring it back and give it to Homer. I will add it to the quest. the quest list. All right, let us drop map piece. Here. I believe that is Buccaneer's Dan. And I'm trying it right now with it in the upper left. Which would mean... Thank you. 
I don't think that that's correct at the moment, but right now I also just need to get them out here so I can see what the pieces look like. can't turn them. Edges aren't edges. Peace goes now. It's not a terribly difficult puzzle. But working it out like a puzzle on, on the ground like this is so much easier than trying to like draw it. <clears throat> Map. All right. That means this is a buccaneer's den. Water. Uh. I don't. I don't remember the name of this place. So. It is the top of the croissant. You know why? Because the island looks like a croissant. Croissant. Um,
so initially when I was looking at this, I had assumed that the island we were looking for was where the pick and shovel are, but I think it's not. It's the little island because that looks like it has an X on it. And I believe that is what we were looking for. So I think we're trying to go to this little, to, to that island. New, yes directly south of the Croissant Island that has Numagencia on it. Which will forever be the Croissant Island to me. Because it looks like a, a croissant. Not because it's buttery and French? Mmm. Buttery French islands. I think if I do this right, the map should render properly in the bag. No, it won't. It won't. It's not possible without throwing other things in the bag. Yeah. I see how it could be possible. It would require me to put three additional items into the bag. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. Wait, what? Move one gold. And then... Oh, it's not gonna work that way. Oh, shoot. Um... I have made the map look correct in the bag. Thank you, Alexi. I will indeed stretch and endeavor to have better posture and uh, hydrate. So now it's in my Excel notes and I can just open the bag and see the map if I needed to. I don't know why, but that was important for me to do. All right. To the boat. To the, to the ship. Also. Oh yeah, I did mark all of the map pieces as, as achieved. You know, it's quite possible that all three of these ships are mine. Hey, Adventures of Tony! <laughs> How is my chief of napping? I don't know what that looks like on the... Eh, you can see it. I got the name updated. <laughs> I don't...
don't know if they do um, daylight saving time where you are. Um, but our clocks here will change tonight. You woke up late, which is to say, right on time. I woke up much later than I had planned. I had intended... Oof, that didn't quite work. I had intended to, um... Uh, blur, 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 words. I had intended to words. I had intended to get up at like eight o'clock this morning because I had things I wanted to get done and I woke up at 10.45. So not ideal. It was bothering me and I had to fix it. I don't know if you all can see what I'm doing, but it it was bothering me. The uh, the map was like one line on the spreadsheet lower than the rest of like the titles and such. I had to fix it. I know, I'm being ridiculous. It is corrected. Uh, the sun rises and sets around the same time every day. Well, so, but so that you're aware, um, most of America starting tomorrow will be an hour earlier for you. Because our clocks move forward tonight by an hour. So what would be one o'clock becomes two o'clock. No, 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 I was, but I could totally understand if, if like where you're living doesn't do the time change, um, forgetting that it's happening and like ending up being late to like go and watch somebody's stream uh, because they're streaming an hour earlier than you thought they were. That's all. That's what I'm trying to avoid. Okay. If I want to find the coast of the island with new new magentsia on it, I should be able to do so if I head east from here. You've got apple clocks for that. I, yeah, I mean, I guess that's a thing. You are the chief of napping, too. So. Whenever you wake up is when you wake up. And who cares about time? Time is just a weird soup anyway. I have not seen um, CR. I did see that uh, you had spoilers in the spoiler channel for it. And that apparently... It had, um, there were feelings involved. But I have not seen this week's yet. All right, so if I find the westernmost point of this island and head south? Which I think is sort of about right where I am. Yeah. Maybe. I'm saving. Because if I get lost, I can restore and try again. Were there lasers with those feelings? Just 
Sailing south. Hello! Hello, the island! Stones. Hydra? Who's fighting a Hydra? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry I reminded you because apparently it was traumatic for you. I don't know what happened, but... I didn't watch last night because I fell asleep during the week before and I haven't had time to finish it yet. Uh, eventually I need to just do like an actual like go back and rewatch from the beginning because I'm I've been trying to keep up but I'm I'm mostly lost I need more I've been doing the um, chronological order walkthrough of Star Trek or watch through of Star Trek and when I'm done with that I need to just watch campaign three <clears throat> Hydra's in the swamp. It can get poisoned without fighting anything. I see. All right. Find the three stones and stand in the center. Done. Walk three south. One, two, three. Hmm, we're at the center of a Tootsie Pop. Uh, nine west. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 12 South. You lost your air pro prods. Air prods? Yesterday's pants. Oh, uh, yesterday pants. Yesterday's pants. What kind of a band would yesterday's pants be? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. The Hydra is sitting directly on the spot that we need to be at. Of course. <laughs> Grunge. Well, thanks, game. You're just love orally. Puts you right next to an old dead tree, which is where I should be. Look. I have a shovel in my inventory somewhere, I think. Move shovel to me. I've never used a shovel in this game. Let's try. Use shovel. Use shovel. You dig a hole. Save game. Party go down the hole. Shimino says, this is the pirate cave. Thank you for identifying the location for me, Shamino. Let us look at the clue book. It should have a map of the pirate cave, I hope. Caves and dungeons. Sutex Castle, the Ant Mound, Buccaneer's Cave, Covetous and Wrong, the Crypts, the Cyclops Cave, Deceit, Despise, Destered, Hero's Hole, Oh, well, we haven't gone down Hero's Hole, have we? Hithloth Library, the Pirate Cave! This dream is now rated R. Uh, I hope Yesterday's Pants has at least one album dedicated to Pocket. Oh, definitely. Okay, description. I can't tell you too much about this place. An old pirate gave me this map and said there was a good, uh, there was a great treasure buried there. 
lot of good it does having a map without knowing where the cave is. I think he made the whole thing up just to have a good story to exchange for drinks at the tavern. Finding this cave will prove vital to your quest. There is one at Buccaneer's Den who has knowledge of it. Well, we have found the cave of the pilot. So, we should be on a level one at the moment. Where did we enter level one? I see. We have a path to take. This cave is somewhat convoluted. Um... Light the way. Saves the game. And we shall explore the pirate cave. Oh, hello. I don't read this script enough. I need to have my reference. Oh, yeah, here lies, of course. I don't remember that letter. Oh. C A Captain. Uh, here lies Captain Hawkins. He he died a hard. death and he D -E. and he deserved it here lies captain hawkins he died a hard death and he deserved it okay apparently captain hawkins was not well loved searching here you find a green potion a main gosh, a black shield, swamp pick, or sorry, swamp boots, a bag, a pick, a sextant, and a backpack. The diary and wit saber's room? I do not recall. And I I can't remember who Witsaber was. I feel so silly. I don't have any notes. Um Witsaber. Lord Witsaber. Mayor of Trinsic. Me? A pirate? Absurd. Yeah, I broke into his room. But I didn't take notes on, like, what we found there, so I don't remember.
Uh, feel free to share if you want. Um, get backpack. He total is too heavy. Too heavy? What do you mean too heavy? Captain Hawkins will be making no more entries. Oh, okay. All right, Shamino. You'll get the things. Get to the backpack. It has torches and gem, which means you could give it to somebody else. Uh, I believe Yulia. Yulia would like it, yes? Move the backpack to... Yay! And I can move those 26 torches into the backpack. There. Keeping that inventory organized. All right, grab that sextant. Grab the pick. We probably won't keep it. But what's in the bag? Cheese. A knife. We don't need this knife. We don't need the ale. We don't need the plate. We're savages and eat with our hands. And we enjoy eating that way. There's nothing wrong with eating it with your hands. Um, all right, move the cheese to the mouse. Never mind. It's fine. I don't need two picks. Occasionally, I need toothpicks. Swamp boots. A black shield. That I'll see a black shield. It weighs two stones and can absorb two points of damage. I don't think anybody needs that. Because the shield that Katrina currently has is better. could give it to me. That way, if I switched to my melee weapon, I would have a shield that I could put on, too. That's not a bad idea. And it would be the same weapon combo that our poor dead captain was using, so that maybe is not a good idea. But whatever. It's fine. It's totally fine. Uh, I don't need the green potion. I'm not going to be poisoning anybody. You're eating your hands through? What? Um, okay. Well, we found Hawkins' body. Let us continue our salad days. Um... Oh. Jindaran. Um. No! I did that badly. Load. Nope. Restore. <sighs> Let's try that. Just a one more time, yes? I looked. I did not find. Let us get back to the salad days. Um. Disarm trap? I should have cast detect trap. Dispel field. Repel undead.
Is it disable? What is the spell for getting rid of trapses? Someone tell me of the magics. Uh, detect trap. Harm heal help ignite light. Reappear telekinesis trap. Untrap. It's called untrap. Untrap. No effect. On the AirPods, got a kind bar for breakfast. Couldn't make coffee. I guess I just need to move the dang thing. Um, I wonder if I can. Yeah, I just need to move it. Um, couldn't make coffee because your single drip, single serve drip thing is under a pile of dishes in the sink. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oops. Incidental damage. Look at this sign. The sign says, this way. Well, clearly this is the way. And we are now all Mandalorians because I said this is the way. Right? That is not the map I wanted to put up. Today's a good no coffee day. I don't think there's actually anything down there. You know? Can I move the spikes? Not possible to move the spikes. I'm saving. I don't think that we need to cross these spikes, but I'm going to. But if it turns out there was nothing here, I'm just going to restore. The map showed nothing. And indeed, there was nothing. Maybe you'll speed up time later with some caffeine. Why did you step on the trap? I moved it out of the way. Why did you step on it? Some NPCs and their lack of concern for their own safety. And here's me discovering traps by stepping on them. But how else am I supposed to discover them? I did not step on that. The sign says, this way, and it points south this time. Maybe they felt sad that the trap wasn't going to live up to its potential. I suppose that's possible. Okay, so the sign says go south. <clears throat> so clearly that means we go north this time, right? There's n Well, no, there is. Like, there's no way to move this out of the way. And then I realized, yeah, there is. So I knew from the map in the clue book that it is 
there was nothing up there, but I still had to go. All right. <laughs> Let, let's continue exploring the pirate's cave. And then downward we go and cross the little bridge. And continuing southward. Bat! There's Bat! Inventory full of tribbles? What? Did you feed them? You oughtn't to feed the tribbles. I thought the signage said, don't feed the tribbles. Drop to your death. Well, how can we ignore an instruction like that? Okay, where are we, I wonder? There was still plenty of level one. Um, we went down the hole. And we are on level two, just, just down to level two. There are only paths up from here. But one of them goes to a section of level one that you cannot get to otherwise. Which feels like it might be worth checking out. Let me just not save in case we want to restore and forget that we've done this exploration. Where might this take us? All right, so now we're back up on level one, but we're in a section that doesn't appear to be accessible anyway, but from where we just were. curious what's up here. And the answer is nothing. Nothing is up here. That's what's up here. Yep. Absolutely nothing. You haven't got the daring turbo on your Romulan yet? Uh, you just have to feed it some cream soda. And then you get a lovely red-headed triple wearing a Bajoran earring. Julia, why are you over there? Are you set to run away? No. Very odd. Okay. Let's not drop to our death. You know how, you just haven't done it yet. Well, that's totally fine. Onward, we shuffle through this pirate's cave. What do these signs say? They point in opposite directions. That one says this way, pointing south. That one says this way, pointing north. I'm looking at the uh, <clears throat> the map, and I think both ways are, like, the signs are actually correct. 
Both of them are correct. The question is, where do I actually want to go on the next level? Ah. Actually, I can go to any of them because Dupree is carrying a skip. I did not know that we were going to be fighting a dragon. Uh, Jana, would you strip real quick? Thanks. We just uh, don't want the dragon casting any magic. I wish that they would stop hitting Dupree with arrows. Well, that's the end for that dragon. We'll grab those 35 gold and end combat and take off the storm cloak and put the armor back on. Use the ladder which puts us on an island in the middle of water. Well, I guess this is a dead end, except, hey, Dupree. Let's just toss that little skip in the water there, eh? Excellent, excellent. All right, I could use a little bit of healing. So let us just cast a little bit of a healing spell on myself. And hopefully do more than one point of healing damage. And Dupree could also use a little bit of a heal. Yes. Healing damage. The best thing since sliced mustard. And into the skiff we go. The question, though, is where we want to go from here. Well, if we want to get down to level three, we want Southwest. Um, although probably not the airline. Okay. So far? So jelly. Light the way. Save game. Oh, a sign. The maze of death. That sounds pleasant. Let's go. <clears throat> right. It appears that if I go left, that this might be a decent path. And then uh, we go this way, and up here, and up here. It helps to have a top-down view. Because, hello, I see a ladder. Ladders are good ways out of mazes. Especially when you're trying to get further down into the dungeon. 
I hear something to the northeast. Off limit. We are on level three of the pirate's cave. Uh, the map above my head shows that level three, we have entered here. I see a hole. I see, oh, I think that's another hole. I see, I think that's water. And that, and that looks like a hole, and 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 a hole. The down ladder is over here. I think they're holes. A whole lot of holes, puddle them, indeed. Save the game. I have done. Thank you. I believe our direction of travel is to the eastward. And then south. We'll pass the little water. A water hole! Here! Indeed, indeed, Puddle Glove. A key. And... We'll just go down the hole. To level four of the pirate's cave. All right, we have entered this cave <clears throat> here. So we need to go west, north, west, north. Unless we entered here. No, we entered here. Was there another way down? Oh. There were lots of other ways down if there were holes. So, okay, the hole on level three directly north of our position falls into fire, so that's not where we want to go. And there's one. I believe that goes into fire, that goes into fire, that goes into fire, that goes into fire, that is our target. This is how we get down to level four and actually progress. Everybody uh, up the ladder one more time. And we are in the wrong space. Sure. Let's go up and... They really want to make sure Zelda dungeons don't have the most confusing multi-level dungeons, huh? Um... When did The Legend of Zelda come out? I think by the time this game came out, Legend of Zelda was out. I was just trying to think of the date. Just to know for sure. They do like their confusing dungeon in video games. That is certain. Ah, yes. Swamp. Swamp. OG Legend of Zelda was 86. Which would make sense, because we didn't have a Nintendo until we lived in Virginia, and we didn't move to Virginia until 86. And we got it right after it came out. I just didn't realize that we got the Nintendo like the same year we moved to Virginia, but that would also make sense. Um, 
and this game came out in 1990. So it's possible that they got some inspiration from Zelda for their dungeon design in this game. It's also very, very likely that Zelda got some of its inspiration from earlier iterations of this game. And... Okay, um... This should be the hole, but let's grab this gold nugget. We're in a pirate's cave. We have to grab gold when we see it. Save the game. And party go down the hole. And we are now on level four at the other ladder. I believe we have a succeeded. Why am I talking that way? I am not talking to the traveling folk person who has written that way. All right. For a second, I thought there was a hole in level four. Link to the past was 91 in Japan and 92 in North America. Ah. I, I didn't play a lot of those early Zelda games um, other than like the first one. So a lot of them sounds like Max the Armor in Britain. Um, so a lot of the a lot of the Zelda games, um, I really enjoy watching Xander on Zelda because um, many of them I have never seen before, like the one that he's currently playing. Um, Song of Seasons, I think, is the title. And then he's going to play Song of Stories. I think it's Song of, I don't know. I know it's like Seasons and Stories, right? I honestly actually don't even know that. <clears throat> I had never heard of them before. Apparently they were Game Boy, Game Boy Color games. Um, and had, it seems like they were like, two versions where the stories crossed in sort of like a uh, Pokemon style where two games get released and to get everything you need to have both or know somebody that played the other. Song of Ages. Okay, so it, he's an Oracle of Seasons. He's, play, he's playing Oracle of Seasons. The other one is Oracle of Ages. Got it. So not Song, Oracle. But I came close, and Seasons and Ages, not Seasons and Stories. Hey, for having never heard of them before Xander played the, the one on Tuesday, I think I'm doing pretty good. That would be good. Um, I don't know why they... I don't know why they don't release a bunch of stuff, although some of the stuff they have released, they shouldn't have. At least not in the form they did. Um, Ocarina of Time deserved better than to have its graphics destroyed like that. Because um, it looks worse on the Switch than it did on the Nintendo 64. But yeah, they just like literally put the game on there and didn't like do anything to localize it to the platform, which come on, that's, that's a horrible way to do it. You should make it function better than that if you're gonna release it, especially because people know it's nostalgic. Like with the Wii, they did a bunch of um, adaptation. You could buy controllers and such to actually play the games and enjoy them in the way that they were intended to be enjoyed. Um, I don't think we need to go through this poison field. We pass that one. Yeah, and then there's the stalagy. 
and we go continuing to the east. This poison field that we do need to pass through. So I need to dispel field. Ha! Gandalf says, none shall pass. Well, it's a good thing my name is none then. Yes? I am the one who shall pass, yes? Because I am none? So much slimes. Stop expanding, slime. Nuns shall pass. Gandalf at the Church of the Covenant. Church by the Covenant. By the Convent. Covenant. Convent. Wow. Y'all understood what I was trying to say because you could read it in chat and realized that I was not reading it properly. Come on, everybody. Shoot the slimes with your arrows. I'm sure that the arrows will make the slimes. Oh, that's the thing that happened in D&D this week. Um, it had nothing to do with slimes. But... I think... I think we fought a mimic. I don't know if it was a mimic, but I think it was a... It was pretending to be a, a stone, and it, I think it was just a mimic. Like, it was pretending to be a stone slab, and it was a mimic. I thought at first it was a gelatinous cube, except it had looked like stone, so that didn't make any sense. I think it was a mimic. It, um... We discovered it because there was an odd stone, and I decided to reach out and touch it with my sword, and my sword stuck to it. I had to free my sword, and then it was spitting acid or poison on all of us, and it was not good. We'll get through. I'm not scared of them. I wasn't the King of England. Uh, I did free my sword, but this is like my uh, magical sword that's in 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 hair. It is occupied by a uh, magical spirit that turns it into a magical weapon and grants me abilities uh, based on a thing. Uh, and. Ancestral weapons, I think it's what it's called. It's a uh, from not directly from D and D, but from one of the other like places that makes content to be used in the Dungeons and Dragons system. And um, yeah, it's been. I, I was not willing to let go of that sword. Uh oh. I've run out of light. Let the magic light the way. All right, let's see. I think there's a, a bit more slimes somewhere. Let's go find them. Yeah. Where'd everybody go? Are you fighting the slimes over here? Ding, 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 ding. The time is now 6.15. You are nearing end of stream. Please save soon. Thank you, Elixie. Alright, there's... Earthquake. Or... Giant. Please tell me it's not an erupting volcano. Um, ignite slime. 
It didn't work. I'm not surprised. Harm. No! Shit. <laughs> I cast harm on myself! Where did everybody go? Y'all, get over here! I need you to fight this slime with me! Where are they all? Who's Julia fighting that Julia was grazed? What's going on? Did I miss something? I probably missed something. I don't know where everybody is. I could find them fairly quickly by just, like, switching to controlling them. Everybody's health is fine, though. Just trying to clear out all the slimes. What is... I don't want acid slugs. Who, where did the acid slug, slugs come from? Apparently, their treasure was well guarded by monsters of the deep. I see more slime. I see slimes of green. Pink acid slugs too. Guarding the dream of feeding the game. And I said to myself, it's a wonderful game. <laughs> Come on. Other people need to show up and start attacking these things. My boomerang doesn't do much. Game doesn't rhyme with two, I know. Rhyming is not required in parody songs, even when the original was a rhymed song. At least... Yeah. Oh! Yesterday was Mario Day! I didn't even... I didn't notice, which is sad. So, I mean, my day was okay. I just, I didn't notice that it was Mario Day. Um, hopefully you all had a fun time with the Marios. Nobody's been poisoned yet, which is nice. I say that, and of course that means that it's gonna happen. Let's see, can I just make them all die. <laughs> Fireball. <clears throat> I could cast Insect Swarm. Charm Confused Flame Wind. Sure. That worked nicely. Okay, Flame Wind works well against slimes, apparently. Do, do they just keep respawning? Is it not possible to, like, actually fully clear them out of this space? Explosion's also a good spell. I didn't want to hurt, like, me. Uh, that was my hope. 
Where? Katrina, why were you down there? Monsters respawn. Got it. Okay. Everybody come and join me. Yeah, they do respawn, don't they? You got some acid slugs. At least everybody's near one another. Let them clear out those. Let me get a little bit of light on the situation. I shall attempt to open this door. And I am not surprised that it's locked. Hello, Sherry, my lovely little mouse. Use one of them lovely little lockpicks on the door for me. No effect. specific way of opening the door because I have something that will unlock unlock magic locks I do have a way I mean, I have a magic that will do it. It's also possible that I would have a key. I'm going to try them. Because I never tried them. I am unsurprised that none of the keys worked. Not usable. Fine. Unlock magic only works on magic locks, right? Yeah. Telekinesis. Curse, dispel field, fireball, great light. Mass Awaken, Mass Lake, Peer Protection, Repel Undead, Animate, Disable, Great Heal, Locate, Mass Dispel, Explosion. Well, it got the door open. It, it did hurt us a little bit. I should have backed up. Oh my goodness. Katerina. Let's just fix that poisoning. And there was much rejoicing. Uh, oh, I should uh I should Hey, group, follow me. We got some explosive barrels. Right, let's look. 
searching here, you find nothing. What? There's a dagger and a sword. Well, let's get the gold. 12 gold. I think I was supposed to um, open the crate. It's fine. Leather armor weighs 2.4 stones and can absorb two points of damage. Nothing worth getting. Uh, get the gem. This is uh, plate mail. Don't really need it. Twelve gold in this chest, and it wasn't trapped, which was nice, because I didn't check. A fire wand. Get. Yes, please. I like. I take. It's mine. I am going to move the 61 gold I am currently carrying to another character so that I don't overburden myself. I'm going to move some of the things I am carrying off of my person. Alright, and this is just a candle in the wind. It's gold. Save the game. Use the treasure chest. 19 gold. Do not blow up the place. Look in the bucket. Why is there a bucket? Get this gold. Get the lightning wand. Use the crate. You find a wooden curved, sh or a wooden shield and a curved heater. Magic helm and an iron helm. Grab that magic helm. Why, why go boom? Why go boom? It's giant. Uh, move this magic helm off of our person. Move the five gold nuggets to someone else. Save the game again. Use the treasure chest. 26 more gold. I will take it. Um, get the invisibility ring. Get 24 more gold. Leather boots. Spiked collar. I'll get the spiked collar. Get the gold. Get the gem. Get the magic bow is too heavy. Oh, wow. I'm carrying a lot. Uh, 179 off of my person. Explosion on a powder cake. Um, magic bow goes away. All right. Now use the treasure chest. One torch, one flask of oil, and an invisibility ring. I will take that ring. I liked it. I took a ring off of it. Plate mail. Oh, no, just a plate. Not even plate mail, just a plate. There's a lot of junk here. Um, get two gold nuggets. Use treasure chest. You find a fan. That's a weird item. I'm going to take it. I've never seen one in game before. Use the cast. Not usable. What do you mean not usable? I have three sextants now.
Um, passing out these invisibility rings. Look the fan. That I see a fan. It weighs 0.5 stone. The fan is useful. Well, it's going in my bag. Look at the pliers. I don't know. I think we've had pliers before, but I will take them just in case. Look at the hammer. It's hammer time. I don't know that we need those tools, but I took them. He's deaf as three. Uh, use a sealed barrel, you find cloth. Use other sealed barrel, you find nothing. I will take the cloth. Somebody else is carrying cloth. Damn. We'll just add that to... Add that to our cloth stores. Um, get storm cloak. Get silver tablet. Total is too heavy. Six stones. Well, dang. How am I gonna carry that? That bag is weighing ten. This one's weighing 11. I don't have to have these on me, right? I'm gonna move them to somebody else. That backpack, 18.5. This is where all of my weight is, isn't it? Well, shoot. We will uh, endeavor to address that. Endeavor to address that we are carrying too much. We will move it to the people that are traveling with us now. That, nope, sorry. That didn't work out so great, did it? 27. Five stones? Uh-uh. I don't have to have these on me to use them. Okay, we're moving three. Now we'll move the other 24. Now I should be able to pick up this thing, because... Get... Silver... Tablet. Shoot. Is there a spell that will just take me back to the entrance of the dungeon? Because I'd like to grab my boat. Uh, explosion, insect swarm, lightning, paralyzed, pickpocket, reveal, seance, x ray, charm, uh, replicate, chain bolt. Enchant, energy, wind, fear. Is it like escape or something? Well, I don't know if there's a spell that does it. The skiff can also sail on the ocean. That is true. I thought there was a spell that would just take you to the entrance of a dungeon. Unlocks magically locked. Negates magical traps. Provides a long lasting illumination. I'm thinking you three and four. Well, that was a useful spell. 
I'm sad. Fine, fine, fine. Flame wind. Could always just walk up to, but gate travel. Eclipse. Apparently, Eclipse is a spell that you can cast. Time stop. All right. Well, in that case, we do need to go back to the Buccaneer's Den. And we're down here pretty far. We can abandon the boat that we have. If I go to Moonglow, we're not far from Buccaneer's Den, right? Or is it New Magencia? It's New Magencia. Freeze on and playing Super Metroid. Awesome. I will, we will be heading over there in a moment. Because we, we are a little over time, but I was like, maybe I can run back to Homer real quick. What in the what? Oh, I'm in a circle of stones, but so are the sheep. There was a way to climb the fence that I've forgotten what it is. Oh, you just walk over it. Sheep end. Indeed. I don't know. That might be our skip. We can try. It's. It is a skiff that belongs to us. Am I on the wrong island? I think I am. I think I wanted Moonglow, not Moon, not, not New Magencia. It's fine. We're just gonna go quickly. He's a magic bullet, yes. Yeah, I, I was at New Agencia. I think I wanted Moonglow. The question is, how long will it take me? Will I get lost? The answer is, probably. But you said we were supposed to return this, this, this cloak, so I'm trying to do that. So weird being able to sail the oceans in a skiff in this game. And now, now it is dark. Hello, the game. Um, let me cast some light because it looks like we're near some. I can't. Really? I didn't realize I couldn't. Huh. I see current. I see... Land. I see... the possibility that we might actually be where I wanted to go? Maybe not. I'm not sure where we are. I've gotten us lost. 
but we're at land, so it can't be too bad, right? Where the heck? Wherever we are, let's get out and find out. Am I intrinsic? Where am I? There's a stable. Did I sail all the way to Trinsic without knowing it? Blacksmith? I'm on New Magencia. Thank you. No, wait. Because that makes more sense. Except that maybe I'm not. You're not sure where I am now. Okay. I think we're in... I? Sweet dreams in. First building on the right after entering the walled town. Blacksmith. We're intrinsic. Amazing. Amazing. Well, I know where I am. How I got there? Uncertain. <clears throat> but... That means that I can hopefully find my way to where I was trying to go. Uh, if I just do what we did before, right? Sail up the coast to pause. And then head east. And then we'll head over to Bree. Right. Um. I think if we go east from here, we should be good. Cross his fingers. Saves game. This is the thing I should always do before going on a sea voyage in this game. I should. Save. Come on. We're almost there. We are almost there. Hello, the island. Just sail around to the other side so we can reach the dock. where all of our other boats are. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. We are doing it. I don't know how I got to turn six so easily, but I'm not mad about it. And we are here, and we go... Inside and see if we can get the beatnik here. Come on. 
Where is everybody? Apparently, uh, they didn't want to be here. We will wait all night if we have to. Where is everybody? Come on, game. Put the people where they go. I want to talk to the people. Thank you, game. Like, honestly, what was going on? Am I preventing them from getting... Yeah, I just realized, like, they can't get to where they're trying to go, because I'm in the way. Are you here, Homer? Homer! Hello! You see a shifty-eyed character. Have you found the storm cloak yet? Yes. Then hand it over and we're even. His eyes gleam with greedy anticipation. Do you give him the cloak? Yes. He takes the cloak from you. Thanks for keeping your word. There's not many that does these days. Well, we have done the honest thing and returned er, and honored our side of the bargain. I do not know what that will ultimately mean for us, but we have done the thing. So. Oh, wow. I am going to save here. We will take the tablet to Mariah next week. Um, but we have run a little bit over. I'm okay with that, but uh, yeah, I think Mariah gets the tablet next week and then we start whatever comes next because I don't know. I don't honestly know what happens next in this game. Um, so we'll discover it together. And uh, let me. Yeah, we're going to head on over to Bree really, really quickly here. Uh, let me go ahead and pop up the credits. Um, thank you so much, everybody, for joining me today. It was a lot of fun today, actually. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Was Not Worth It for being a subscriber over on Coffee, um, and of course to the artists who've done art for the stream. Um, thank you to my mods. Thank you, Moody Mystery, for all of the help <laughs> and tips and whatnot with this game. Um, I feel like we did good progress today. Um, so <clears throat> I will be live tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time uh, for some Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Um, hopefully I will see some of you there. Lord Portico, thank you so much for gifting a subscription to Moody Mystery. Moody Mystery, welcome to the Rogues Gallery. Um, enjoy the emotes and uh, enjoy thanks for thanks for being here and being a part of the community. Um, <clears throat> we are going to be heading over to Bree. Um, Bree has been or is uh, playing Metroid again, Super Metroid. Um, so that was re apparently Resident Bard's favorite game as a kid. Um, uh, and so now Bree is playing it. Um, so we're going to be heading over there. The uh, raid call is there. If you have my emotes, you can copy from the first one. It's hashtag rogue raid with the chaos emote. If you don't have my emotes, that's totally fine. Uh, there's one for you as well. It is the hashtag rogue raid with the Twitch raid emote, which seemed appropriate. It's like a bomb. Uh, with a smiley face on it and some rainbow flames coming out the back. Anyway, I hope I see all of you again soon. Um, let me go ahead and set up the raid. I realize I had not done. Uh, <laughs> yes, I hope I see all of you again soon. Until I do, get out there and do some shenanigans. <laughs>